Industrial Revolution in Britain Imagine being a kid around 5 or 6 years old and your job is to crawl under massive, loud and dangerous machines to pick up cotton lint. These kids called scavengers or pieces had to be quick or they'd end up with serious injuries or worse. Fingers, hands, even entire limbs could become pennies under the pillow. And forget about sick days, you would expect it to work through the pain or you were out on the street. During the Industrial Revolution in Britain, child labor was very much a thing. Everybody had to work, but bigger people couldn't fit in many places. Plus, they had this thing called developed brain, so they wanted more money. So as long as you were small and mean out of children, you were good as an apple. Kids as young as five were thrust into dangerous and exhausting jobs across factories, mines and other industries. In textile factories, they worked as scavengers, crawling under machinery to pick up cotton lint, facing the constant threat of injury from the machinery's moving parts. In parts they lost. As already mentioned, they faced many health threats such as losing limbs or in coal mines where children served as trappers, opening and closing ventilation doors in the darkness, they could get black lung. Hey look, little Billy slacking off, let's go give him severe punishments. Black lung you say? We'll worry about that later. Coal mines in the United States. Next we head over to the land of the free. In the 19th century, kids were thrown into coal mines to work as breaker boys. Their job? Picking out slaves from coal all day in dusty, cramped spaces. Their lungs? Full of coal dust. Their pay? Barely enough to buy a pack of gum today. And safety? Let's just say hard hats weren't exactly in the budget. During the 19th century in the United States, child labor in coal mines was a grim reality. Children as young as five were employed as breaker boys whose job was to separate impurities from coal by hand in a coal breaker. They inhaled thick coal dust, leading to severe respiratory issues, and faced constant danger from machinery. Other children worked as hurriers, hauling heavy coal carts through narrow mine shafts, which caused intense physical strain. These little sunshines endured brutal working conditions, typically from sunrise to sunset, six days a week, with minimal pay and no opportunity for education. But I guess who needs math if they're gonna die from lung cancer in a few years? The mines were teeming with hazards, including collapses, explosions, and constant threat of suffocation. Punishments for mistakes were harsh, adding to their suffering. The dire conditions eventually caught the attention of reformers, leading to significant legislation such as the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938, which established minimum age requirements and maximum working hours for young workers. And that's why kids these days are soft. Real quick, consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything and it means a lot to me. Plus, you can always unsubscribe if you change your mind. Chimney sweepers. So in 18th and 19th century England, cities were booming and chimneys were everywhere because everyone loved a good fire to stay warm. Problem was, chimneys got clogged with soot faster than you can see pneumonia. Enter the chimney sweeps, and by sweeps I mean young kiddos. They were the tiny human-sized chimney brushes of the time. These rascals often sold into the trade by desperate families who were trained by master sweeps, and by trained I mean shoved up chimneys to clean them. Just like my teenage years crawling through a dark, narrow, soot-filled shaft every day. The job was dangerous, burns from hot chimneys? Check. Chronic respiratory issues from inhaling soot? Double check. And if they got stuck, they were yanked out by their feet. If they hesitated, their masters would light fires beneath them to motivate them. Talk about the burning desire to succeed. Life for these kids was miserable. They slept in basements or attics with little bedding, survived on barely any food and faced constant abuse. Matchstick factories. So back in Victorian England, lighting up your life literally meant having matches on your hand. Matches were super popular because it's basically instant fire. But behind every lit match was a sad tale of little kids toiling away in dingy factories. Enter the matchstick factories, where the workforce was full of children. These kids, some as young as six, were put to work making matches. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. Because the magic ingredient in these matches was white phosphorus. Now white phosphorus has the lovely trait of being highly toxic. Which is a problem when you're dealing with it all day, every day. Exposure can cause severe health issues, including fussy jaw, where the jawbone deteriorates, skin burns and irritation, respiratory problems, liver and kidney damage, and even neurological effects. The working conditions were abysmal. Imagine a stuffy, poorly ventilated room packed with kids, all handling this toxic stuff. So basically a kindergarten. No protective gear, no safety regulations, just raw industrial age exploitation. The kid's job was to dip sticks into a chemical concoction and then try them out. Easy peasy, except for the whole being poisoned slowly thing. And boy did the white phosphorus do a number on them. A lot of sick kids, let me tell you this. On top of that, the factory owners were all about profit maxing, which meant more jobs and less money for the children. They didn't just face health risks, the danger of fire was ever present, because, you know, matches. Carpet weaving in Pakistan. 
Move over, Aladdin, because in Pakistan, kids are weaving carpets instead of flying on them. These children work in small, cramped workshops for peanuts, dealing with respiratory problems in jacked up spines. It's like CrossFit, but instead of bragging about it on Instagram, you can brag to your husband. In Pakistan, the carpet industry has been tainted by the grim reality of child labor, casting a shadow over the intricate beauty of its handmade carpets. For decades, children as young as five, what's with the five, have been grinding in the cramped, dimly lit workshops where these carpets are woven, subjected to difficult labor and harsh conditions. Day after day, these young souls spend endless hours hunched over looms, their small fingers deftly weaving intricate patterns into the fabric, all while inhaling harmful dust and fibers that pollute their lungs and threaten their health. A lot of the time, many of these kids are born into poverty, their families unable to afford the luxury of education or even the most basic necessities of life. As a result, they are often sold or trafficked into this life of exploitation, robbed of their innocence and robbed of their childhoods. Far from the safety and warmth of a nurturing home, instead of feeling warm hugs from their moms, they get closure from rugs. And instead of drinking cocoa for breakfast, they inhale rug dust. Despite efforts by activists and organizations to combat child labor in Pakistan's carpet industry, progress has been slow, and the problem persists, fueled by poverty, corruption, and lack of enforcement of labor laws. Cobalt Mines in the Democratic Republic of the Congo Let's talk about the DRC, where kids are mining cobalt, a key ingredient in your phone's battery. Picture seven-year-olds in toxic pits handling cobalt with bare hands. These kids don't get playdates, they get hazardous work conditions and abuse all so that you could play Clash Royale for a few more hours. From the late 20th century to the present day, the Democratic Republic of the Congo has been a hotspot for child labor and cobalt mines, highlighting the dark underbelly of the global electronics industry. Children as young as 7 are ruthlessly exploited in these mines, enduring quite some hardships. These young laborers, often lured by the promise of better wages or simply forced into the mines by desperate circumstances, toil for long hours in treacherous environments without proper safety equipment or protective gear. The work is inherently dangerous, with constant exposure to toxic substances and the ever-present risk of accidents, including mine collapses and machinery mishaps. Moreover, the physical toll is definitely there. The back-breaking work and prolonged exposure to hazardous conditions take a severe toll on their health, leading to respiratory illnesses, musculoskeletal disorders, and other debilitating conditions. Cocoa Plantations in West Africa Alright, from the late 20th century to the present day, West Africa. Kids here are working on cocoa plantations because their chocolate bar didn't come from the candy fairy. They're using machetes, working long hours, and sometimes get straight up trafficked. Child labor on cocoa plantations in West Africa, particularly in Ivory Coast and Ghana, has been a severe issue. Young children work for 12-hour days under harsh conditions, performing dangerous tasks like using machetes and handling pesticides without protection. These kids are often trafficked or sold by impoverished families facing physical abuse and severe punishments if they don't meet the quotas. Working in isolated areas, they lack access to education, healthcare, and proper nutrition, leading to long-term health issues and perpetuating a cycle of poverty. Despite international efforts and initiatives by organizations like International Labor Organization and various NGOs to combat this exploitation, progress remains slow. Some chocolate companies have begun implementing fair trade practices and traceability in their supply chains, but much more needs to be done to eradicate child labor. So kids, be careful out there and know your legal rights not to be exploited for labor. But before that, give me a hand and subscribe, like and comment.